All right, so if the Lord burdened upon your heart to become a preacher one day, this is probably the most important teaching that you want to hear. So this is the teaching that you want to hear. If the Lord laid upon your heart to become a minister or a leader of a church one day. Now this is very important for, I'm not saying this is everyone online, but this is specifically for people online who have a lot of head knowledge, which is what I want to warn you. I've seen it. Okay, I've been through past years as a Bible believer. I've seen it. Pride is a very troubling issue. And you got to understand this fact is that that's why everyone want to go rogue, start their own ministry or start their own online ministry. Maybe that's why some people want to be against church buildings because why? Because they want people to go to their ministry instead. Sometimes it makes you wonder. But you got to be very careful of the fact of I, I want to be a minister for the Lord. It's not as easy as you think. And trust me, your pastor right here, he's learning and seeing even more and more as the years pass by. So it's a good thing that when I started the ministry that I was very careful at the beginning. But here's something important. No matter how cautious you are at the beginning, when you grow more as a pastor, I promise you this. I promise you that you're going to learn even more things that you have to be cautious about. So that's why it's best to do it now. If the Lord's going to call you to be a preacher and a minister one day, you've got to realize how heavy and how much of a high price it is, how much of a high calling it is. And you can't just take the mantle like that. Now, I'm the greatest evidence, perhaps, one of the greatest evidences for people who are young and fresh and want to serve God and being single. So I'm the typical best candidate for you to mess up. So when I say this kind of stuff, I'm not just saying this. I know because I'm in your shoes. I wouldn't be saying this. Okay, I trust that. That fact people understand, and I'm going to tell you about the high price of being a preacher. That's why it's, I stress so much in going to a church right now, submitting under a pastor and working under him right now. Why is that? Because that is your chance to prepare for the ministry. And if you fail in being a disciple, you fail in being a preacher. Remember that. Okay, so let's talk about this fact. We're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and then we'll look at verse 5. Of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. Ah, okay, so what's important right here is that when you become a pastor, when you work in the ministry for the Lord Jesus Christ, a pastor, when he preaches for the Lord and preaches his book, you got to understand this fact is that it doesn't matter how high of a position you are. Now, Paul is the greatest pastor probably, right? But Paul mentioned it didn't matter how high he was. Look what God had to do with him. It doesn't matter how high your credentials are. See, I can get my doctorate. I can uh, be in the ministry for years. I, can have, I could have went through several other pastors. I went through training in Bible school, etc. Street preaching, visitation, faithfully for years. You all know my uh, reputation. I could do the same thing like Paul. But it doesn't matter. Look at verse 7. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. See, I don't care how much revelation you know or you think you know. Remember that, all right? You're going to get so many things in the Bible that other pastors didn't see, and you're going to go, oh, I got so much abundance right here. Listen up. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the who? Messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Now, remember this fact. When you are a pastor, do you know who Satan will attack? He's going to attack you. So he is going to attack you because you are the person that is the minister. So this creature right here, he is going to attack you. When he attacks you, you got to realize this. Any vulnerability. Listen up now. Listen up. Any vulnerability, and I don't care if, well, it's not a big deal. No, any vulnerability, he's going to hit it on you Amen. than any other person. Amen. Did you notice sometimes your pastor can be nitpicky about things? 
Sometimes I'm overtly about that. But the problem is this, is that because I've been like this all my life from satanic attacks. So because of satanic attacks, I had to go like this, nitpicky, that nitpicky, careful here, careful there. And then do you know how many times it is easy? This is so important. Who's the person that goes by flesh out of great zeal and fervency for the Lord, but Satan possessed him? Go to Matthew 16. Matthew 16. Why do you think Jesus picked on Peter the most more than any disciple? Do you know why? He's going to be the chief apostle. So because he's the chief apostle, this is very interesting. You're going to notice Jesus picked on Peter more than Judas Iscariot. How about that? Why is that? Because Satan doesn't need to target Judas. He possesses him. He got him. He's going to get on Peter. Hmm. Look at Matthew chapter 16. Look at what Peter did at verse 16. Here's the exaltation above measure. God lifted him up. Verse 16, and Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Ah, God revealed him specifically something that the other disciples didn't see. Like Paul said, God revealed to me something above all others. Just like this pastor, if I reveal to you something that other preachers have not revealed, praise the Lord. But see, that's not something where you settle in and you go, uh-huh, so I must be right, everybody's wrong. That's where Satan gets you. All right? There's a thing that even liberals and skeptics talk about called confirmation bias. What that is, when you already have a biased mindset and you have a judgment and a conclusion, if you see certain things that confirm it, then even though it's a wrong judgment and conclusion, as long as you see certain patterns that confirms it, you'll be locked into it. And that's very important that you got to avoid. You got to avoid. As a pastor, it is important to have spiritual discernment. You can't be gullible. You got to see patterns. You got to keep an eye out. But you can't jump to that conclusion either. All you can do is just leave that as something, as warning signs. And you better be careful of jumping the gun once you jump the gun especially when the Lord teaches you a lesson where you could be wrong about something, then you do great damage to yourself, but more than you, there's something more than you, it's your church. You got to realize this is not about you, this is your church. You know one thing I learned about especially prideful online so-called ministers? This is what I get very upset about them. They think the ministry is about them. So whenever damage has happened, they think it affects them. Now listen up. This is important. If you're a minister and you do something wrong or even an, an, a mistake, it's not really a big sin. You got to think about this. It's not just you. The damage is not on you. The damage is on your church. Now some people might think, well, pastor, why are you very nitpicky about doctrine? Why is it that you're very careful about certain people you recommend or who you fellowship with? Can I tell you something? This is very important. You know why? I'm not thinking about myself here. You know what I want? I want to fellowship with everybody. There are some people saying, why don't you fellowship with this person, that person? Trust me, I want to fellowship with those people more than you do. But the reason why I can't recommend them, I don't have them speak in the church and etc. is because it's not about me, it's who. This is important. Now, I have a, it's, it's a small rebuke to some Bible-believing preachers. Now, I'm not saying that I'm the one that's right, everybody it's wrong, and I'm not saying it's a majority of Bible-believing preachers, okay? So I don't want people to think, oh, he's talking about me. No, not at all. I fellowship with independent fundamental Baptist pastors too. But I do it with in mind on if it doesn't affect my church, if it doesn't affect my church, if it doesn't affect my church. So I don't invite people easily to speak on my pulpit. You got to understand that fact. Why? Because I'm responsible for the church. Use your head now, okay? Use your head. If you fellowship with that specific pastor and the churches know that and you, that pastor speak, what do you think your church member will do? He's going to listen to that pastor. And if that pastor teaches something doctrinally off and then your member listen to that, what if your member gets wrongly taught yep. by a pastor oh, when you are in charge of your sheep? Now use your head. Use your head. That's why I don't fellowship with a lot of IFB people. You got to be careful of that. 
Okay, so you got to think about your church, what damage you're doing for your church. Oh, you got to think about yourself. You got to get a break too, Pastor. You got to get some rest. You're right. I got to think about my health. That way I can keep the church going. But it cannot be sacrificed where I sacrifice the church at all. So because of that, you got to realize this. Whatever vulnerabilities you got, remember this, Satan will target that, and he's probably doing it right now, where he can get the flesh come out from Peter. And look what Peter did. What did Peter do? Uh, Peter, at verse... 22, then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. You know who's the, uh, the people who can judge easily the most? It's not members, it's pastors. Pastors, when you, because at that position, you are forced to see a pattern. You are forced, because you have such high spiritual discernment, just like a judge. Judge, they have to have that discernment where they see things and cast the judgment. Pastors are that position. They are judges. And, they, and you can't help it. It naturally happens. When you preach, when you pastor, when you deal with people, it naturally happens. Instincts come out. But here's the danger. The danger is, is that the pastor, he goes by completely how his instincts go because he believes he's right. But then when you go by that, it's like Simon Peter at verse 22. You go by the flesh, and then you, what did Jesus tell him at verse 23? But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, who? Satan. Thou art an what? Offense. That's an offense. You've got to be careful of that. Pastors, trust me, pastors are more than you, the most judgmental people. Why? Because they're used to judging you on the pulpit, <laughs> preaching, teaching. But it's dealing with people where they have to learn, hmm, I've got to calm this down. I've got to filter this one out. I've got to think about what edifies the brethren, the brethren, the brethren. So you've got to realize this. Pastors are the most judgmental people. So that's why if you're going to become a pastor, if you have that kind of bad habit, you're not fit to become a pastor because when you become a pastor, that's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. So that's why it is very, and who's attacking? Remember, who is attacking? It's Satan. Remember this, he's going to attack you more than a typical person. That is very important to understand. So let me give you a few examples right here. A few examples is this. Let's say that you're a grown adult, okay? You're a grown brother and sister in Christ, okay? And then uh, you hang out with another brother and sister in Christ. Let's say that you can do it at late at night. So if you're both grown adults, that's on you. Uh, let's say that we have a brother or a sister in Christ who have affections for each other. And man, praise the Lord. It'd be great that this pastor would do the wedding one day on that one. That'd be awesome. So this is, I can't do that. Now you might say, why is that? The reason why is because in my stand right here, people are going to see me at different lenses. The only way I can ever uh, marry somebody is where I'm going to have to have the approval of the pa fellow pastors. And then uh, because my father is a pastor as well, have his approval as well. Why is that, Pastor? Why, Man, that's so hard for you to get married. That's right. Welcome to the ministry. You, you want to enter the ministry now? Not fun and games. Oh, Pastor Kim, 131,000 subscribers. That don't come without sacrifice. Good, and some of you know that I had to live in a shack for several years as well. Amen. You seen me gain people where I was growing, and then we were going to move to a different building, and then you see me lose it all again. This is not a game. Now, if you want to be a preacher, can I tell you something? If you're going to be a preacher, you better keep an eye out on all these things, and you better start working on them, and I mean immediately right now. Because if you want to be a pastor as soon as possible, you cannot become one until you go through the process. You want to go through the process? Work on it right now. So this is very important to understand as a pastor. You've got to realize what sacrifices you're making. That's why 1 Timothy chapter 3, look at this. Look at this. Verse 1, this is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, is it bad? No, it's not bad. He desired the good work. You know me, I really get happy when you guys want to preach and teach or get called into the ministry. But you got to realize what you have to sacrifice. Now, what's the sacrifice? A bishop that must be blameless. Okay, we're done. Okay, we're done right there. We don't even have to read everything else. Now you want to enter the ministry after that? You got to be careful where people find blame in you. The husband of one wife, he cannot be involved with polygamy. Vigilant, 
vigilant, right? Keeping an eye out. Sober, he's serious of good behavior. That's why this pastor here, yeah, who can joke and laugh, but he's got to be serious minded too. I know that I can be sometimes a little ignore, annoying, like do this, do this. Are you doing this? Are you doing that? You know why? You have to be sober minded at the moment, not preoccupied with the fellowship or anything else. It's a serious work given to hospitality. See, always helping the person. Well, the person didn't help me. The person is actually evil and treated me. No, you got to do that. Even if a person evil and treated you. I do that. And I'm not going to tell you all the people involved in my life throughout the past years. Apt to teach. Well, no kidding. You know what people look at? Apt to teach. Oh, I'm called to preach. <laughs> Boo hoo hoo. Remember, abundance of revelations, Satan gets you. Amen. Not given to wine, no striker, not greedy, a filthy lucre, but patient. See, you can't take action immediately. You got to go blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah. Oh, no, no, no. Blah, 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 blah. Okay? You got to be patient. Why do you say blah, blah, blah? Because, oh my goodness, the flesh worries about something, wants to take action right now. And you got to realize this. The hardest thing you can do is just wait on the Lord. And you got to do that. Because you don't know if God has a better plan than you. You don't know if God is going to change the situation or change the person, or even you'd be surprised he changed you. So you got to realize this fact, okay? You got to be patient. Not a brawler. Not a brawler. Okay, so if you have people in the church who you see are used to fighting or brawling, then that's not called to the ministry. Why is that? Because the pastor has to keep everything wonderful and peaceful as edification. Not during lunchtime and fellowship. <laughs> Food fight. See? So if that's why I know rebel rousers. See, rebel rousers, I don't like them online. Rebel rousers. And if you have that kind of habit in the church too, you're not called to preach and pastor and teach. That's, that's why you have to, you think this is fun now, huh? This is fun what I'm doing. This is fun. Okay, not covetous. See, you can't be covetous. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? If, you, if you're going to be called as a minister, if you can't control your own wife and children, you cannot be a pastor. Until you have the wife and children where there are good Christian testimony to others, then you can enter the ministry. That's why, see, this is not, if a high calling calls for high sacrifices, you got to understand. So that's why I'm encouraged, that's why I'm straining so much. You got to take action now on working all these things. If you take action now working all these things, trust me, you're not going to get over it in a day. It takes years. That's why I'm encouraging you to do it now. Why do you think I keep telling you to go to church now, supporting your pastor right now? Because if you want to get the higher position God wants you sooner, you got to do it now because this takes time. And God don't rush things like that. All right, so I hope that, uh, look at verse 6, not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the who? Devil. See, you know when People say, can you call me, to, can you ordain me, pastor? I go, well, how much do you know about the right doctrines? Have you read a lot of these other Bible-believing preachers stuff? Um, did you uh, know about dispensationalism, King James Bible issue? And I had some people who want to take charge of a ministry. I'm like, well, I first got to make sure with you on these doctrines. And you're like, no, 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 I want to do this. I mean, it's not about doctrine. It's about relationship with Jesus. You know what? They turn out to be prideful people because they want to take control of things. So then the devil use them and they don't come back to church anymore. I've seen that. Verse 7, moreover, he must have a good what? Report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. See, your attitude should be in a way where people, even if people don't like you, they can't find evil against you and they can give you a good report. If you have that, then you can become a minister. All right, I hope that you understood the gravity of the ministry. Okay, if you want to be a ministry leader, remember this. It's not by starting a channel and then running your own ministry and condemning all other pastors and churches out there. That is not how you start. That's why you see all these warnings that I've given to you match with the pitfalls of those prideful preachers. Learn a lesson from them.